Matthew Henry's Commentary on the Whole Bible. An Exposition, with Practical Observations, of The General Epistle of Jude. Introduction. This epistle is styled, as are some few others, general or Catholic, because it is not immediately directed to any particular person, family, or church, but to the whole society of Christians of that time, lately converted to the faith of Christ, whether from Judaism or paganism, and it is, and will be, of standing, lasting, and special use in and to the church as long as Christianity, that is, as time, shall last. The general scope of it is much the same with that of the second chapter of the second epistle of Peter which having been already explained, the less will need to be said on this. It is designed to warn us against seducers and their seduction, to inspire us with a warm love to, and a hearty concern for, truth, evident and important truth, and that in the closest conjunction with holiness, of which charity, or sincere unbiased brotherly love, is a most essential character and inseparable branch. The truth we are to hold fast, and endeavor that others may be acquainted with and not depart from, has two special characters, it is the truth as it is in Jesus, Ephesians 4 verse 21, and it is truth after, or which is according to, godliness, Titus 1 verse 1. The gospel is the gospel of Christ. He has revealed it to us, and he is the main subject of it, and therefore we are indispensably bound to learn thence all we can of his person, natures, and offices, indifference as to this is inexcusable in any who call themselves Christians, and we know from what fountain we are holy and solely to draw all necessary saving knowledge. Further, it is also a doctrine of godliness. Whatever doctrines favor the corrupt lusts of men cannot be of God, let the pleas and pretensions for them be what they will. Errors dangerous to the souls of men soon sprang up in the church. The servants slept and tares were sown. But such were the wisdom and kindness of providence that they began sensibly to appear and show themselves, while some, at least, of the apostles were yet alive to confute them and warn others against them. We are apt to think, if we had lived in their times, we should have been abundantly fenced against the attempts and artifices of seducers, but we have their testimony and their cautions, which is sufficient, and, if we will not believe their writings, neither should we have believed or regarded their sayings, if we had lived among them and conversed personally with them.